So uh, welcome everyone to our uh, scheduling information night, course registration information night for the class of 2027, which is for students who are currently ninth graders, rising 10th graders. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody's in the right spot because this next 45 minutes or so will be uh, specifically tailored for information for students who are moving from ninth grade into 10th grade. Uh, my name is Shelton Mooney. I'm the principal of Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. Uh, very, very happy to be here tonight with you to uh, participate in this evening and, and share this information with you. Um, I'm going to speak only for a couple of minutes, but I do want to say if you hear it in the background, I apologize. My son is downstairs practicing his trumpet. I've closed three doors between me and him, but it seems to still be really loud. Uh, so I apologize if that's coming through. Um, so it doesn't seem like it's been a year since we would have been together to talk about uh, rising ninth grade course information. Uh, but as we, it has been, uh, and hopefully the beginning of this year has has gone smoothly for your for your child. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, and we'll talk about it as we go through the evening, is really as we're talking about these things, uh, the courses and the information and the opportunities that students have, um, it really is important to make sure that we are that, that students are registering for the courses they want and trying to make the best decision that they possibly can at this point in the year, uh, because we use the course registration information that we get now to make staffing decisions for next year. Uh, and that doesn't mean that we can't ever make course changes, uh, but I do make decisions about how many teachers we're gonna have in different areas uh, based on the requests we get now. And if we get a lot of requests for changes later in the year, that's very, very hard to overcome. So I do ask that um, kind of you and your student review the information that's available. Think carefully about the, the options that you want to pursue for next year uh, so that we can try to make sure that we're prepared for that uh, going into that staffing season. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Goodwin, who is the administrator who supports rising 10th graders. Uh, and he is going to kick us off on this session. Um, so we do have the Q&A uh, turned on just for you to know. I saw someone raise their hand. Uh, if you use that function, we will answer questions and allow them to get started. So Mr. Goodwin, I'm going to turn it over to you right now. And uh, welcome again, everyone. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mooney. Um, congratulations, parents of ninth grade students. We've half, we're halfway there. Um, if those of you who are wondering if you'll make it, I have twins who are now 10th graders, so I did survive ninth grade last year. So I just want to quickly go over the the agenda. Uh, we're going to have um, some registration reminders for you, um, go over our counseling assignments, cons um, discuss the ultimate, ultimate important graduation requirements, um, then our wonderful resource teachers for each content area will come on to talk about the course offerings, as well as our program completer process, as well as planning for the future, um, whether it be IB, AP, or um, early college. Thank you. Just a quick reminder before I go to the next slide, um, I'm seeing some hands get raised. Um, Please put any questions in the Q&A, which you should see on your webinar screen. Again, we'll be monitoring the Q&A for this webinar. Thank you, Ms. Sutton. Just very importantly, oh, from now, and it should be how uh, your ninth, your current ninth graders, uh, register, course registration is open now in, the, in their student view account. Um, and the registrations will close on the 31st of January. So you have now between between now and the 31st of January to select the proper courses and make sure that if your students have any questions, they touch base with their counselors. And Ms. Henry is here to support or represent our counseling department. Um, but also the most importantly, the course registration information and instructions for registering for courses through Synergy are available on our new course registration site. And that site will give you all the additional information that's specific to um, the general information as well as information that's specific to your current uh, ninth grader, rising 10th grader. Uh, key registration dates, um, counselors have already visited um, students in their social studies classes um, starting in December. Um, rising to, again, now we're having the course registration night uh, preparation. Next Wednesday, a week from today, 
um, all students will be able to visit the electives fair through their English classes, and they'll have an opportunity to see all the electives that are offered and supported here at BCC. Um, and they'll get an idea to see what's actually being taught in the classes if they've only heard a little bit about it or they get a chance to talk to current students who are currently taking the courses and get an idea. Um, but again, um, through January 31st, the last um, day is the course registration is going to close, which means there won't be any opportunities to make any changes after that. And the first, uh, February 1st through February 23rd, you got, um, the counselors will be calling um, students to the offices to have those individual um, conversations about the courses that they've selected. So even after the 31st, if you realize if you have more questions about a course and what your um, student's trajectory is, then those one-on-one -on -one conversations with the counselor will be very important to add or have any adding any additional questions that they may have for their counselors. So you can add questions after the first and certainly um, work with your student and their counselor to make sure their future course selections are exactly what they would like for them to be. And I believe you get to stop hearing my voice now. And Ms. Henry, um, our school counselor, uh, will take over from here. Thank you, Ms. Henry. Hi, thank you, Mr. Goodwin. Um, so I'm Marie Henry. I'm one of the, um, I believe you have 10 counselors um, here at BCC, because uh, we're a pretty big school. Um, we have up the counselor breakdown. Uh, it is mostly by alphabet. Um, there's a slightly different alphabet depending on the grade level. This is specific to our current ninth grade students, so rising 10th graders. Um, and if you your child happens to fall with the last name NH through RUB, um, I am your child's counselor. Um, and hopefully we've maybe <laughs> interacted already or at least emailed. Um, and so if you have any questions about course registration, please don't hesitate to reach out to your counselor directly. Um, we're always here to support with that. Um, and just a quick overview of the graduation requirements. In general, students need to earn 22 total credits. Um, when I go into the classroom, I always like to make the students do a little math problem. Uh, so it's if you have one credit per class and you're taking seven classes for four years, it's 28 credits. So most students don't have any issues hitting this 22, 22 target. Um, but more specifically, within those 22 credits, uh, you'll, I think we'll go to the next slide that'll break down a little bit more specifically what students need to do. So these are all of the specific graduation requirements, and I'm not going to go in too much detail because we're going to hear from the uh, resource teacher for uh, most of these departments to go over what the specific courses are and what some of the elective options um, available are as well. Um, so the thing I recommend for rising 10th grade students is to work on those one credit uh, elective requirements like the tech ed, like the fine arts, uh, like the health, like the PE. So those are all one credit each. Um, and students generally like to get those done in ninth and 10th grade so that going into 11th and 12th, they have more space to take electives um, like AP and IB classes, internship, dual enrollment, all of that fun, or maybe full IB, um, all of that fun stuff. So that's just my general recommendation in terms of going into, into 10th grade. And on top of the classes that students need to do, uh, they'll need to pass all of the Maryland State assessments. Um, and they'll earn 75 student service learning hours. Um, and if you if your child enrolled after sixth grade, they do have uh, prorated SSL hours. Um, so you can always check in with um, with me. I'm actually the SSL coordinator as well as uh, one of the school counselors. Uh, if you're wondering uh, if your child does qualify for a student ser service learning hour waiver. Um, 75 is the graduation requirement, uh, but students can work towards uh, 240 hours to earn the certificate of meritorious service. Uh, so that is for that is where students get a certificate at awards night. Uh, they also get the coveted purple tassel that they get to wear along with their regular tassel on their cap at graduation. Um, we have a few 
questions in the chat that I thought I would answer live for everybody. The first is about um, the individual counselor meetings after registration closes. Um, so just to clarify, we uh, counselors go into the classrooms uh, that happen in December through social studies classes in each content area, usually around the time of electives fair that each content puts together slides that is shared with their content. So for instance, in your English class, you'll learn about English, what comes next in English, what the English electives are. In your world languages class, you'll learn about what class would be next for you and what the elective options are. Um, so that's through each content area. So every student will receive that through their classes. And then we have the electives fair to also learn about all of their electives. So for instance, maybe they're not in a tech class right now, but they're interested in tech electives. They will have the opportunity to get that information at the electives fair. And then with all of that information and the full course bulletin, and again, all of this is posted on the website, um, the registration site, students put in their course request based on what they think they would like to do. And there is also linked on that course registration site, a sample student planner to help them figure out kind of what classes they wanna take when. Then in those individual meetings with counselors, they pull up those course requests. So that's why it's after the course registration deadline. So they like to make sure every student has their course requests in and the counselors use that as a basis for their conversation. So that's how they know this is a student that's interested in trying to do Project Lead the Way and also full IB. And it gives them that information and they can have those conversations. And counselors at that point can go in and make the changes if things are needed. Um, so it's, it's really to give us a jumping off point of what the students are interested in to guide those conversations. Um, and Ms. Henry, is, did I mischaracterize anything as part of that process in there? No, nope, that that sounds about about right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the individual counselor meetings are for every student. Those will happen throughout the month of February, so that throughout that entire month, counselors are doing those meetings. However, if there's a specific unique situation or something comes up, you can always request a meeting um, after that. Like if something were to change, maybe they go to a workshop and really fall in love with a certain career pathway that they hadn't thought about before and now want to come back and change things, you can always request a meeting with a counselor. Um, and then the last piece I'll touch on live is that um, these slides and the recording will all be posted on that course registration website uh, once they're ready and we'll also be emailing that out to families. And I think I hit on the things I wanted to touch on live. Um, the, oh, sorry also related to that if the questions are filled and not possible um, that doesn't happen till later so we the way our process works is students put in the course requests then counselors have the meetings and they can make changes and then based off of that data we build the schedule so the schedule is not built yet um, we build it based off of the course request so there would be no way for it to be full already at this phase of the um, scheduling season okay um, with that being said, do I have, uh, let me just check and make sure Mr. Halloran is here. Um, so Ms. Henry, if there's anything else that I may have missed that you can think of. Um, well, I will say I saw a question. I was just about to respond to it, but I'll uh, just do it live. It was a question about do students need to make an appointment to meet with us? Um, they do not for the, these meetings. Uh, we have students come down in small groups during their uh, social studies class. So their social studies teacher will direct them to come down to the counseling office. And then we just one by one go through each of our student, students in that class. Um, a lot of us really enjoy those meetings because it's sometimes a chance for us to get to see students that we don't see regularly. Um, but yeah, you don't need to worry about scheduling them or having your students schedule them. Uh, we will have them come down uh, during their social studies class. Okay, and with that, Mr. O'Halloran, you are up. All right, fantastic. Good evening, folks attached to a BCC sophomore. Um, I probably have one of the simplest presentations this evening. Um, there are only four credits that students need in English over the four years. They need a ninth grade English uh, both semesters. They need 10th grade English both semesters. In 11th and 12th grade, there's some further choices they can make. They can continue on in the excellent Honors English 11 in 11th grade and Honors English 12 in 12th grade. Or starting in their 11th grade year, they can decide if they would like to take on the extra challenge 
of an AP or an IB class. The AP class is broken up into uh, two sections. There's AP language and composition, which they take in their 11th grade year. And then 12th grade year, they take AP literature and composition. Some students decide for the extra challenge only in their 12th grade year. So they take honors English 11 and 11th grade year. And then they go on and take uh, AP language and composition in their 12th grade year or AP lit and composition. The only one they can't do that with is the IB class because IB English language and literature is a full two year course that they must take in their 11th and 12th grade years. All right, we have several excellent English electives available to students at BCC for 10th grade, rising 10th graders especially. A very popular one is BCC TV video production. They put on our uh, morning news show that comes on every week. Um, there is a, an audition process uh, for that. Um, that information will be coming out to your students soon. There's also our excellent Chips Literary Magazine, which is open to students in all four grade levels. We have a creative writing class that is open for 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Uh, the Tattler is a very popular class and activity for students to be involved in. The, um, the caveat with that is in order to take Tattler, you must take one semester of Journalism 1 previously. This is something that comes up every year. There's students who don't take journalism and want to get into Tatler, and we just can't do that. They have to take that Journalism 1 course first. So if your student is interested in joining Tatler or really enjoys news media, definitely have them take that Journalism 1 class just in case. We have a special class run by Ms. Fischel called Student Leadership uh, for ninth through 12th grades. Um, anyone can take that class, but it is specifically designed for students in SGA, a minority scholars program, etc. Uh, I mentioned Tattler already. It's a two semester elective that students can take. Uh, and the other popular one is our yearbook class. Uh, yearbook one, ninth through 12th graders can take that. And yearbook two is only open to 10th, 11th and 12th graders. And Honestly, that's it. all I have to present to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Oh, this is also me. Yeah. Or, or is it me? Yes. The, we moved the performing arts. To, yep. Gotcha. So the, the confusion comes because these are performing arts classes. Um, they do get you the fine arts requirement and or elective. However, they are taught by English teachers. So we have advanced acting and play directing. We have dance as a fine art, uh, production and performance, which is our filmmaking class. We have a class on stage design and we have theater one and two available to your sophomores. And that's Thank you. everything. That, that's it for Mr. Haller. He is now gonna hop into the Q&A to answer your English related questions. And we're gonna move on to Mr. White. Hi everyone, uh, this is Marshall White and I am the resource teacher for the music and art and PE and health. Uh, starting with visual arts, we have lots of electives that students can uh, try out. Uh, the AP Studio Art is very popular uh, with drawing 2D and 3D design. We also have ceramics uh, and sculpture, a um, lot of sections of that. We have two different teachers teaching that. Um, that's uh, you can take that as, uh, throughout your time at BCC. We also have digital art one and two, uh, which is everything uh, computer based um, that is in a, a digital art classroom. We also have foundations of art, which is uh, basically for students that are just starting out and don't have much of a background, but they'll get a good foundation in the art world. And then if your child is interested in some more advanced stuff for IB art, uh, that, that is uh, available. And we also have photography classes and studio art as well. That's not AP, that's not AP, but just regular studio art and a little more advanced art. If you have questions about that, um, you, can, you can certainly contact me, but we also have an art department chair uh, that I would forward that information to to get a little more specific. In music, which is what I teach every day, uh, 
If your child is uh, in an ensemble, we hope that they'll certainly continue. Um, uh, if they're in 10th grade right now, they're, they are likely either in the symphonic band or symphonic orchestra, and they should sign up and continue for the wind ensemble, which is 11th and 12th grade, and the Philharmonic Orchestra, also 11th and 12th grade. If they uh, are a little more advanced and already in that ensemble, they can certainly continue with it again. And if they're in choir, they can continue in the choir. There's also the Chamber Singers, which is an auditioned group, and the auditions are ongoing right now during lunch. And there's also a show choir for students that might be interested in a little more uh, popular type of repertoire. Um, <clears throat> we also have our percussion ensemble drumline, which is very active, certainly uh, during the football season and during the basketball season. Um, that is for any students that like to play the drums and percussion. The jazz ensemble is open to anyone through ninth through 12th grade. Um, again, that is also an auditioned only class uh, that is uh, that audition is on January 26th after school. Uh, and so if your child might be interested, there's still opportunity to sign up for that. The information um, has been posted um, online and also is outside the music room. Um, we have some other options uh, for guitar and piano. Both of these classes, they don't need any instruments. They don't need to have any prior knowledge, but uh, they'll learn the basics and then they continue on if they take guitar two or piano two. Um, as I said, we provide the guitars and we provide the pianos. Uh, other possible electives in 10th through 12th grade, AP Music Theory is a very uh, theory, music theory intensive type of course. Uh, there's an AP exam at the end of the year. And IB Advanced Music for 11th and 12th grade, that can be a one year or two year course, depending upon whether they're going to take standard level or higher level. There is no exam for IB Music, uh, but they complete portfolios throughout the year. And then we have a music technology class, which just started this year. It is all computer-based, learning how to, uh, learning about music production and what goes on in the studio, uh, recording studio. So that is also available for 11th and 12th grade students. For health, um, we have uh, now students need to have a full year of credit, one full credit, uh, which was just started, I believe, last year. Uh, so we now offer health in ninth through 12th grade. Um, so they have to take both health A and health B. They cannot take health B without taking health A. Um, uh, there are a lot of sections of that. There's also the opportunity to get it done over the summer, um, if which opens up uh, your schedule, especially for students that are uh, like to take classes in the arts. So that's also an option, but they do need to have both health A and health B before they graduate. Physical education, lots of electives here, very popular. Uh, we have basketball and flag football, foundations of personal fitness and sport, um, and uh, net sports, anything involving a net, soccer, team sports, anything that, that are uh, sporting activities that involve a team yoga stretching uh, also a very popular class uh, for that and weight training and conditioning um, these are all available 9th through 12th grade you do need to have one full credit of pe to meet the graduation requirement uh, so these are all great classes uh, with really good teachers that are that are teaching these so i hope that you'll check those out Thank you. Mr. White is going to join Mr. Halloran over in the Q&A. I see we still have some English questions and a few questions about music and health. So they will be in the Q&A to answer your questions. Please feel free to keep putting those in. We are going to pass it over to Ms. Gallagher to talk about that. All right. Good evening, everybody. As Ms. Sutton said, I'm Janet Gallagher. I'm the math resource teacher at BCC, and I'm gonna talk about the course offerings for rising 10th graders. So actually the most important piece of information over the next two slides is down at the bottom of um, the slides, my email. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna to give you general information about the courses. Um, if you have a specific question about your specific student, 
please reach out by email. I'm happy to answer your questions, give you a thoughtful response. I might need to do a little bit of research for your specific questions. So please, after this presentation, um, reach out. I'll also hop into the Q&A section to answer any questions. So as this slide indicates, MCPS requires four, year, uh, four credits of math for graduation. Two of those credits have to be Algebra 1 and Geometry. The other two credits could be anything in the sequence up here. Um, students also need to take four years of math, uh, four years of math when they're in high school. So that means that students who start taking high school level courses in middle school will end up taking five or six credits of math by the time they graduate. Uh, the table describes the math programs offered by MCPS. Students typically progress through Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and then they start to have a choice for their fourth or fifth or sixth math credit, kind of based on their performance and their interest level in math so far. So your current ninth graders, um, if they're in Algebra 1 this year, they're going to have the choice to take Geometry or Honors Geometry as a 10th grader. The curriculums are going to be similar, but the honors level classes are going to have additional topics. They're going to go at a faster pace. They're going to have assessments that um, go at like a deeper level of uh, rigor and understanding, and they may not always allow for the use of a calculator. If your current ninth grader is in geometry or honors geometry, they're going to have the choice of taking Algebra 2, Honors Algebra 2, or a course called Two-Year Algebra 2. goes at a little bit of a slower pace. Again, the level um, of the Algebra 2 will have similar curriculums, but they're going to go at a faster pace, go at a deeper level, et cetera. If your current ninth grader is in Algebra 2 or Honors Algebra 2, kind of similarly, they will have the choice to take uh, pre-calculus or honors pre-calculus as a 10th grader. And we do have uh, four ninth graders who are in honors pre-cal. They're gonna progress on to calculus next year. Can you go to the next slide? Here we go. Um, so looking forward, you can see all of the options that MCPS and BCC um, can offer in the future in terms of electives. We have four levels of calculus coming up um, in the upper grades for students who are interested in the STEM fields. We have two levels of statistics for all students, um, basically in any field in the future, statistics is a very important course um, for them to take. We do offer financial math. It's a real world uh, math class useful to everybody who will ever have to do taxes, um, take out a loan, make a budget, et cetera. And then we do offer three IB math classes. Um, so any student um, who wants to take an IB math class, especially those who are gonna be earning their diploma, um, will find a good fit for you. Um, so that's it. Uh, my email again is down at the bottom. I'll hop on to the Q&A, but please don't hesitate um, to reach out if you have specific questions. All right. Hi, my name is Chris McDonald. I'm the science resource teacher and um, all ninth graders this year are in honors biology. And so that was a pretty easy choice since uh, there's just one option for 10th grade. Uh, all students will take chemistry. So there's kind of like with math, there's on level chemistry and honors chemistry that students can choose from. And very similar to math, um, the honors course moves at a faster pace, goes more in depth in topics. Uh, there's less review of, of old material and of math concepts. Um, so like I said, very similar to what Ms. Gallagher described with the difference between on level and honors. So all students need three credits, uh, science to graduate. And uh, the biology course this year is the life science credit. And then students need two more credits. And um, one of them has to be physical science, which could be the chemistry course. And then one of them has to be earth space science. And um, this table here shows our different options that um, count for physical science or earth space science. 
basically um, students in the junior year will have to take either physics, which counts as an earth-based science or a physical science credit, or an AP or an IB course. Um, so we have several options for AP and IB courses at BCC, AP biology, IB biology, um, same with environmental science, AP environmental science, IB environmental science. And um, we also have AP physics. Something that's good to know is in order to take our AP physics class, students will have to take honors physics before that. Um, so again, for next year, it's, it's pretty straightforward. All 10th graders will take, take chemistry. And um, I'm gonna jump over to the chat also uh, to answer questions. Thank you. I guess that's me. I'm Hunter Hogwood, uh, head of social studies. Lovely to see none of you, but it's good to, I'm glad you're here. Um, so uh, social studies, as you can see, there are three credits. Your child right now is most likely in U.S. history, which is where most ninth graders uh, start their social studies work in high school. Uh, some of your students as ninth graders may actually start it in AP government. Um, but there are three requirements, as you see, U.S. history, government, and world history. The typical uh, path is U.S. history in ninth grade, government in 10th grade, and world history in 11th grade. Uh, as I said, some students who are taking AP government as ninth graders next year as 10th graders, they will uh, automatically need to sign up for AP U.S. history. That's sort of the two year program for that. But everybody else as ninth graders or your, your, your core as, as rising 10th graders, rather your core uh, course is going to be the uh, government course, uh, either honors government or AP government. Um, the difference there, similar to what has been described before, AP government uh, is an advanced placement course where students can take a test at the end of the year uh, where they can potentially earn college credit. Um, so the AP course, uh, as you might expect, moves a little more quickly. There's a little more reading that is involved in that uh, um, course. And the honors course moves um, at a, at a somewhat slower pace, but but uh, dives a little bit more deeply into some of the other topics with local government. Um, so there's a choice there, and then your, your child will really want to talk to their current U.S. history teacher if they're deciding between AP and honors, and uh, certainly you can reach out and, and email me, and I can connect you with their teacher uh, to see what, what be the best fit will be, uh, AP or honors, uh, AP uh, government or honors, national, state, and local government. And again, my email is at the bottom of the slide. You can always reach out uh, about that. Uh, electives for 10th grade, we have the fantastic electives in social studies. Um, and there are uh, a number of them. Uh, most of the ones that are on this slide uh, are for 11th and 12th graders, although there are some uh, rising 10th graders who uh, sign up for AP Psych or AP Comparative Government. Um, potentially a new course, AP Human Geography, uh, but those uh, are mostly 11th and 12th grade courses. 10th graders who sign up for those courses, uh, they do so with the knowledge that if those courses fill up, the, the 10th graders will be the first ones that, that uh, kind of get bumped off of that because they have other years to take those. Next slide, please. Yes, here are the uh, semester uh, electives that are available for uh, rising 10th graders who, uh, and these are all just fantastic classes. You can see a great variety there of uh, options, East Asia, comparative religions, economics, law, Latin American history, Middle East, women's studies, philosophy, and personal finance. So these are all uh, really exciting, fun courses. They are, uh, we kind of design all of our electives in mind with sort of high interest, low stress, so that they're, they're meant to, you know, really kind of meet the kids where they are and, and expose them to some uh, fun, exciting uh, items uh, that they might be interested in. So those are some great options that uh, your students might be interested in doing uh, as, as 10th graders. They're also available for 11th and 12th grade if they can't fit them in for next year. Um, that's, I think that's the all I, all I have. Uh, primarily, I will, I'm not going to hop or jump into the chat. I'm going to skate into the chat. 
So if you have questions, I mean, the Q&A there, uh, put those there and uh, I'll answer them or, or as you can certainly email me and I will get back to you with some answers to any questions you may have. Thanks very much. All right. Uh, thank you everyone for coming tonight. Uh, I am Leanna Blanford and I am the resource teacher for the Career and Technology Education Department. Uh, so first I wanna go over the 1.0 technology education requirement from the state of Maryland. Uh, every student to graduate from a Maryland high school has to have one credit of technology education prior to graduation. At BCC, we have three options that are offered every year. We have Introduction to Engineering Design, which is an engineering focused technology credit. Uh, you will notice the note next to all of the tech credit options. That is because in addition to these being for technology credit, they are also included in what we call our career readiness pathways. Those can be used for graduation in lieu of world language. That is probably one to 2% of our students who take advantage of that option for graduation. Most of our students come to BCC with their world language two years of credit done. Um, so if that is the case where your student has two years of world language, this will count for their tech credit. If you are unsure of that, please email me. My email is at the bottom of the slide. I'm happy to look and just double check for your student. Um, but we do have Introduction to Engineering Design, which is very much an introductory course. It is an advanced level course, so it waits just like an honors course. The focus of that content is mostly 3D modeling and the engineering design process. So it's the, the process of iterative design and how engineers go about creating a product, designing a product with specific criteria and constraints. We also have AP Computer Science Principles. Uh, this is a fantastic AP course. It's a great first AP course for a student who maybe hasn't dove into the AP waters yet. The reason I say that is the it, AP test for this course is fairly unique. Uh, it has a component called a create task where the students actually spend about a month of in-class time creating an app that they then upload to College Board. Um, so that app is about 60% of their score and then they have a multiple choice portion that they take as the traditional exam. Um, but it is a really nice first step into the world of AP because they do have that project-based part of their assessment. And then the last option that we have is Foundations of Computer Science. Uh, I refer to this class as kind of the technology credit for the student who really isn't that into technology. It's a very broad brushstroke of how the internet works, how computers work. Um, it's very little uh, programming. It's block-based programming. Um, AP Computer Science Principles uses JavaScript, so there is more programming in that world. So if your student wants to learn to code, uh, the tech credit for them would be AP Computer Science Principles. Um, there was a question in the Q&A that I saw come up just to ask. We do not, we have not traditionally locally offered any of these options as summer school options, but uh, the, in previous years, there has been several technology credit options offered through Central Summer School with MCPS. So if you keep your eyes peeled for when that comes out, I'm sure there will be tech credit options there, some of which should be these classes. If we can go to the, there we go. Um, we have a ton of electives inside of our department that are great options for our students. Um, we have advanced web tools and digital media, as well as website development. Um, they're essentially levels one and two. Um, so website development is what students would take first, and then they move into the web tools and digital media. So in website development, they're getting the foundation of HTML and CSS. And then in the advanced level, they're learning how to add things in like data and data visualization and video and audio and those kinds of things. Um, we also have AP Computer Science Principles Java, um, which is also known as Computer Science A through AP. Um, that's our first level of Java, which is a rigorous programming course that is of discrete Java language. The other discrete um, language courses that we have for computer science are Computer Programming 1, which is um, Python, it's object-oriented programming. And then Computer Programming 3 is our advanced level course for um, for Java. So once they take AP Java, that's our, our capstone essentially for computer science. And then we go off to world languages. We also do have engineering credit electives. The last thing I will note before I pass to Ms. Pomeroy is anyone who's enrolled in a career readiness program already, you received emails from your students or from through Student View for your students um, that overviews more additional information for their pathway. So that is in your parent view inbox. And if you have other questions, you can email me and I'll address anything that's in the Q&A. We will also come back to those in just a minute. Uh, so we have technology credit and electives. Then we're going to talk world languages credit. Then we're going to talk program completer 
options, which is a whole separate piece of the graduation requirement. So because world languages and technology are both a part of that, you'll see them both kind of together at the end here. So we will come back to the program um, completer pathways in a second. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shira Pomeroy, World Languages Resource Teacher. And um, if your student decides to study a world language at BCC, if they choose that as their um, their completer for graduation, as Ms. Sutton was saying, um, then they are required to study at least two years, minimum of two years of a world language in the same world language as their completer as a graduation requirement. Um, and so our recommendation is that students pick a language and stick with it, um, not only so that they get their graduation credits, but also um, for reasons, you know, for building proficiency takes time. Um, as well, the the higher proficiency level that a student gets to, the the better chance they have of um, earning the Maryland Seal of Biliteracy. Um, and if you have questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them um, via email. But we do um, to get the Maryland Seal of Biliteracy for the uh, foreign language component, students need to get to an intermediate high level of proficiency in a language, which does require um, five, six plus years of study in some cases. So that's why we recommend that students pick a language and stick with it. As you can see, we offer um, four languages to study at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, Arabic, Mandarin Chinese, French, and Spanish. As well, there's an option um, called Spanish for Spanish Speakers, which is a course specifically designed for heritage speakers of Spanish who um, have grown up speaking Spanish in the home, but who have um, very limited experience studying Spanish in an academic setting. So if that sounds like your student, then, and if you have questions about that, please let me know. There is a, um, a placement exam that's required for Spanish for Spanish speakers before students can register for those courses. Um, regardless of what language you study, your student does have access to the IB program. Um, and in French and Spanish, we also offer AP level courses as rising 10th graders your students will primarily be signing up for honors level courses. The AP and the IB are mostly for juniors and seniors. And um, a final note is that all world languages teachers will be having conversations with their students. If they haven't already, then this week or the beginning of next week um, to talk to them about which course should come next um, for them. But really it is the just the, the next course in the sequence. So if your student is currently in Chinese three, then next year they'll sign up for Chinese four. Um, thank you very much and don't hesitate to contact me. I'm gonna speak a little bit about program completers and perhaps uh, bounce it back to either Ms. Pomeroy or Ms. Blanford if needed. Um, program completer, you will have noticed uh, at the beginning when Ms. Henry shared the slides about the graduation requirements, there was uh, something there called the program completer or elective program completer. All students must complete one elective program completer and the options available to BCC students are world languages, queer readiness program of study and approved queer programs at Thomas Edison or, or some of the uh, MCPS programs. The world languages, um, I know Ms. Pomeroy just shared all the, the language options at BCC. In order to use it as the program completer, students must take two credits of the same world language and then take two additional credits in elective courses, whatever elective, but that's how that elective completer works. For many of our students, they will take two credits of the same world language um, in middle school and then continue on in their language and that fulfills they'll do the language the whole way through to be better prepared for the CLBI literacy exam and to be um, more ready for college and career readiness uh, by developing more fluency and mastery of that language so uh, that's an option that many of our students do and then we have several 
career readiness programs of study um, that are all listed in the bulletin. I'm not going to go into too great a detail of any of these. I'm just going to quickly touch on them. Um, Ms. Blanford could be a good point of contact for them or your student's counselor, depending on the program. Uh, one is Apprenticeship Maryland. That does, um, we do have students who are doing that. It does require room in their schedule to complete that. It has a learning component attached to actual work-based apprenticeship um, for that program. We also have College Career Research and Development. Uh, that is part of Ms. Blanford's department. So students take a course in their junior year and then take a course in their senior year along with site-based work experience. So for that, completer students do actually need to have a job um, as part of that in their senior year. Um, the next program completers, we have child development. Most of our students start that in 10th grade um, and some do start it in their uh, freshman year. So you may have some students who have already started with the first level of that class. Um, and they will continue on in that pathway. We also have the computer science pathway that Ms. Blanford touched on and Project Lead the Way Engineering. I am seeing some questions about Project Lead the Way Engineering in the uh, Q&A. So please, if you have questions about that, continue to post those there. And I know Ms. Blanford will get to answering those. Um, program completers continued. We also have the Thomas Edison Career Program. There are many, many options available. Um, and this presentation, again, will be emailed out and linked um, on the site so that you can look through all the options that are there. They're all posted in the course bulletin. Um, please note that as rising 10th graders, cosmetology is the only program that must be started in 10th grade to fully complete it. So all the others can start in 11th grade. And there's a field trip coming up for current 9th graders on March 15th if they're interested in that. Now we'll pass it on to Mr. Lewis for International Baccalaureate. Um, greetings all, my name is Tony Lewis. I am the MYP coordinator here at BCC and I'm here to give you all a brief overview of the um, MYP program. Um, the MYP is an IB program that encompasses grades six through 10. So if a lot of your um, cherubs are coming from Westland or Silver Creek, um, they should be familiar with the MYP program. Um, it's a curricular, excuse me, it's a curricular framework um, that encourages teachers and students alike to view the classroom as a canvas for learning. Now, how is this accomplished? Um, it's basically accomplished through conceptual learning, um, which emphasizes the use of big ideas or concepts to help students understand the purpose of what they're learning. Um, it also focuses on the global context, which are the lens through which the learning will occur. Um, teachers also focus on the approaches to learning skills, which are specific skills that students need to master in order to gain proficiency when it comes to the different lessons that they'll be exposed to in the classroom. And finally, um, mastery of the IB learner profile traits, which are characteristics that students need to display inside and outside of the classroom in order to be true IB learners. As an IB world school, um, we are basically have an open access policy, which means that all ninth graders and 10th graders are automatically part of the IB program, there's no need to apply when it comes to the MYP portion of the IB program because we are, once again, an open access school. Next slide, please. Next slide. Somebody get me the next slide. That is the next slide. Now, Thanks. Um, the culminating um, project of the MYP is the personal project. Um, it's something that students get exposed to at the end of their ninth grade year. Um, it's an inquiry-based research project um, that is focused on the student's interest and talents. It's something that will be completed um, during the fall and spring semester of their 10th grade year. Students have the opportunity to go ahead and set their own goals, come up with their own plan for their project. 
um, at the end of the process. Hopefully a product is created or an outcome is reached. Um, one incentive for students to complete the personal project, even though it's optional, is the opportunity to earn half of an elective credit and also receive 20 SSL hours. Also, it places them in good stead for the rigor that they will find in the next portion of the IB program, which is the diploma program um, that Ms. Smithson is going to go ahead and elaborate on um, in the upcoming slides. Thanks so much for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and send me an email. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Christine Smithson. I'm the IB Diploma Program Coordinator here at BCC. Um, welcome to our webinar. Um, this will be fairly quick because these are rising sophomores. So uh, the requirements for the diploma program are um, are not yet in sight, um, and there are no prerequisites for students who are at BCC in grades nine um, or 10. Um, that said, um, to be on track for students um, who are interested in taking the full diploma program, we encourage rising sophomores um, to continue to take care of the, um, the Maryland state of Maryland requirements. Um, that is, they should be doing their tech classes, they should do health, um, they should do fine arts, PE, all of those things that they have the opportunity to take um, during their ninth and 10th grade years when um, their schedule, schedules are far more flexible. Um, some of you have been asking in the, um, in the chat about taking IB courses in 10th grade. Well, the IB courses uh, are actually only for 11th and 12th grades because the diploma program is designed uh, for the last two years of high school, um, whether it's here or anywhere else in the world, it's designed just that so that the IB courses where their student is not is taking uh, the full diploma or not, um, the IB courses are only accessible um, in 11th grade. So for right now, your rising sophomore should be concentrating on trying to eliminate the Maryland requirements. Um, and then of course, to continue our start, start taking a world language. Um, we are open access and so we do not create barriers for our students. So if a student comes to BCC and decides to, to take the diploma program but has not started a language, um, we always encourage that you get started with the language uh, before you get in and if, if, if at all possible, but there is an, there's an avenue for every student. As an open access school, we also don't uh, prevent students from joining our program by having them take any um, tests. We don't have any GPA requirements. Um, it is not a magnet program at BCC because you, you go to our IB World School, you, our students just need to register for the IB courses as soon as they become rising uh, juniors. So a year from now, if you're interested in the full diploma program, uh, we'll be having the conversations about creating a, uh, a schedule like the one that you're seeing on the screen here, which is a two-year plan that all students who are interested in doing full diploma um, will have to create prior to registering for 11th grade classes. So this, will, this is the schedule for, again, rising juniors. So your child would be doing this a year from now if they're interested in doing the full diploma program. If you feel that the full diploma program is not the right thing for your child, and again, this, this is a very uh, student-specific decision, um, then IB courses um, of all sorts are very much available to all 11th and 12th graders. The only IB course that's not available to 11th and 12th graders, if you're not full diploma, is the theory of knowledge class. All other IB courses are available, again, um, to 11th and 12th graders at that point. Um, please don't hesitate to contact me in another few months when you're getting ready to um, consider your decisions for 11th grade. Thank you very much, Ms. Smithson. We'll also join in the Q&A. I'm actually going to stop sharing and pass uh, the sharing over to Mr. Goodwin because I need to hop off to um, start the rising junior presentation. So Mr. Goodwin is going to take over screen sharing and he and Ms. Henry will share th about other future planning for you, including the uh, Jumpstart Dual Enrollment Early College Program. So thank you all and we will um, see you in the Q&A. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Ms. Henry, do you see, are you able to see the Jumpstart dual enrollment screen? Yep, I can see it. Um, awesome. I I'm presenting this one, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so with uh, Montgomery College, we have a dual enrollment program 
um, where students can be duly enrolled um, in MCPS and Montgomery College where they can earn college credit. Now there is the larger umbrella of dual enrollment. And under that umbrella, there's the Jumpstart program, which is the side you're looking at now. And then there's the early college program, um, which will be the later slides. With Jumpstart, students are choosing to take maybe one or two classes uh, per semester with Montgomery College. Um, so this is an option that usually students start looking at junior or senior year. Um, so it's something to keep on uh, your radar. Um, as something that they can elect to do. Um, one thing that I always suggest is that if there's a course that maybe BCC doesn't offer, um, and I'm gonna use a popular one, Intro to Business, uh, they may have it at Montgomery College and a student can take it there or with Intro to Business specifically, we offer that on campus at BCC uh, usually, uh, depending on the year. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Um, so there's the information about the early college program. So this program starts in 11th grade, but the application is in the fall of sophomore year. So it comes up very early. So if it is something that your student is interested in, Keep an eye out for that information around the October time of this coming fall, because um, that's when the registration will open and it will probably close in early November. Now with the early college program, students are attending uh, BCC for ninth and 10th grade, but then for 11th and 12th grade, they're attending Montgomery College full time. Like in the day to day, they don't come to BCC. They go to Montgomery College and they take the classes there. They are still enrolled at BCC. They are still a student with us. They can still be on sports teams and clubs. They can attend um, they can attend homecoming. They can attend football games. They can do uh, basketball games. They can do all of that. They're still a student with us, but just in the day to day, they are at Montgomery College. Excuse now, me, Ms. Henry. We have to finish this one in one minute because they okay. can't start the 10th grade one, 11th grade one until we finish here. Okay. So um, if you want to skip ahead to the end, I guess we'll we'll do that. That's fine. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, this will presentation and the slideshow will be available um, once we finish all the presentations and we have a chance to edit it all. It will be available um, for everyone to view. Um, it will be sent out both via the listserv as well as via email as well as being posted on the website. Again, thank you all for coming. And if you have any questions, please touch base with your counselor. Have a good night.